this, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. Okay, we are still coming to you live from Safety Energy. Well, hold on, Energy Safety Canada, because you knew I was going to mess that up at some particular point. Lauren, you just came off the stage. We just directly stole you from the stage. I'll call it the walk because it's definitely a walk to get here. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm thrilled that people showed up to hear uh, my story, my message, and uh, we can start tackling uh, this problem in the workplace. So let's talk a little bit about it because, of course, there's going to be some people that were not here in attendance and they're listening at home and and they could be listening via the the live stream or they're going to be listening to, to the podcast. So the title of your presentation and why it's time to move from speaking up to speaking in. Can you give them a brief overview on what it's about? Sure. So we look at a lot of aspects of um, organizational performance, and we do Lean and Six Sigma, and we worry about our processes. But uh, one of the strategies we have in play in almost every single organization is this idea that we'll we'll just tell people to speak up, and they're going to speak up, and this is how we're going to have our upward communication and learning. And the bottom line is it's absolutely failing. Um, We know everyone knows it fails fails, but there hasn't been a solution. And um, I'm just excited to present a science-based solution I call speaking in, which means uh, leaders are taking responsibility to intentionally uh, um, invite, include, invite, appreciate diverse perspectives. So can you talk a little bit about the science behind it? Sure. So basically I looked at like complexity science, um, high reliability theory, how much surprise we have in an organization, how important diverse perspectives are for a variety of reasons. One, recognizing those first week signals um, when they when they show up, usually um, at the front line that we're having a problem. Secondly, when something unclear has uh, shown itself and we're trying to figure out what is going on, we're in that sense-making process. Um, so there's that science. And then we have the science from the voice um, and Silence uh, leaders like Amy Edmondson, um, her research so clearly said that uh, leadership deeds that invite and appreciate um, take literally can take nature off its course. Um, and then other research says that all oh, what we need is uh, this is Elizabeth Morrison. Well, <clears throat> the the dynamics around uh, silence are are removed when one expects that the target is open to input. So speaking in is really about creating that leader who has made it very clear that they're open to input and no one's going to get hurt for sharing. So let me, let's me let kind of dive in a little bit to your presentation because I think that this was some of the interesting stuff that you talked about. Okay. This is not just a presentation. This is something that, you're, that you're, you went through, that you lived through. You, there are some applicable applications that you applied to your life. Now, I don't know how much of the story of the presentation you want to get into, and we can, we can kind of leave it at wherever you want to go with it. But this is not something that's just science approach and something you're talking about. This is something that you've applied, and you had a very personal life story that you referenced. Mm-hmm. You had a, a matter of fact, there was two very personal life stories that you, that okay. you referenced during your presentation. You decided to go with this and talk about this from a level that most people would not present in this format. Oh. Why did you decide to go with this different method, just different point of view, if one may say it that way? Well, one, I wanted to, to show, I think we, we can talk a lot about theory, um, but what, how does it play out in our lives? And, and actually, you're right, I was used three life and death stories. And maybe that's why I'm so committed, because as... Um, I was first an emergency room nurse, and I understood right then and there how important it was to make really clear sense of what was going on. And if we were off, someone was going to possibly lose their life. I also learned this over uh, 13 years being a nursing supervisor, where I was constantly responding to some sort of unfolding event. But past that, I did have a misdiagnosed daughter for seven years. We didn't have time for that one. I watching... um, People uh, gather around a very, very uh, uncertain situation. But I shared about my brother-in-law, yes, Tom, and watching doctors struggle to diagnose him and how important it is, um, our open-mindedness, how we ask questions, how we receive others' perspectives when we're trying to figure out what is going on. And, um, yeah, it was a nine-year journey with him. and it just, I just became fascinated. Yes, my story of when I had a huge pulmonary embolism and didn't even know it. 
um, later, I didn't even have time for the stories of when I had a very bad horse accident. And at that point, I was applying the higher liability theory. And I would not be here today if uh, David Van Stralen hadn't uh, absolutely cemented in my head that I need to engage ambiguity. So it's very interesting in how you tie this in and in, in how you bring up these personal stories to you. But they're also, in a, in a very weird way, tied into the healthcare industry. Mm-hmm. So is there something in particular in the healthcare industry where you see this applies more than what it would apply to a normal organization? I think it is, goes a little deeper in, uh, you know, I, my initial first goal was to bring high reliability organizing to healthcare, looking at all the patient harm. This is an important part of the story. So I was, I spent quite a bit of time looking at, you know, how things go very wrong in healthcare. And what would be that remedy? And I really feel strongly that, you know, it is, it is high reliability organizing. It is the mindset for when things are so um, complex and, and changing very rapidly. We have such variability within our patients. But so I started a how do we save a patient? And then I said, well, I realized how important the staff were and how important it was that they felt empowered and that they could share and that we had people listening. And I'm like, shoot, we can't fix the patient harm until we fix the employee experience. So I'm like, well, we can't fix the employee experience until we shift the way the leaders are leading. So I started kind of, I say in the blood and guts, that sounds sad. <laughs> and now I'm knocking on the leader's door and that's where, where the change is going to actually have to happen. So when you, you, when you start taking this and looking at this and you go, okay, this is where the change is going to have to happen at the leader's door. Are there particular organizations that you're targeting or particular industries that you're looking at that, hey, they probably needed more than anybody else at this particular moment in time? Hmm. I know it sounds like a loaded question. Well, I'm very, (laughs) you know, I have a lot of uh, friends that were in tree work. I I see certain industries like line clearance where so much is variable, the weather, the traffic. You know, the more unpredictable your workplace and and factors you can't control um, or industries where things are very, um, maybe you get you get a lot of surprises. Healthcare, yes, of course, oil. You know, we have friends at sub C7. That's a little tricky doing the underwater piping. Um, You know, it's applicable anywhere, but it's not always life and death. So or event organizers, everything goes wrong, but you know, okay, so we had a little mess up on the dinner. It's not, it's not life or death, but I can tell you directly that the types of things that I'm talking about and silence is so implicated in these, in these tragic events. Um, but same thing we have with, uh, you know, shootings. There's always signs before someone didn't speak. Why didn't they, why didn't the people ask? So it's, it's, you know, on one hand, it's so valuable and high risk, but it's also so applicable, you know, in everyday things that may not be life or death, but are still pretty darn important. So when you're taking a look at it and you're going into these or- different organizations and you go, okay, this, I, can, I can see where they can apply here, they can apply there. Are there, I guess, co- common things that you're seeing across the board? Is there... Is this more of the of the the speaking the speaking in instead of speak or speaking up instead of speaking in? It, when they when you're looking at it, when they first contact you, how do you know this is the correct approach? This is well, it's amazing how universal. Um, you, it's very rare to see an organization says, you know what, oh yeah, everyone's speaking up here. It's just great. Um, you know, speaking in is very new, so we're mm-hmm. really more just presenting the here's the idea. We're we're stuck. I do believe the employee experience is going to be the next uh, frontier in organizational performance. We have honed the RCAs. We have tweaked, tweaked, tweaked so many processes. But to me, the employee experience and the silence and the blocked knowledge flow is like the gaping wound in the organization that we're just, we don't have a solution for. So really, I'm at the point of looking for the organization who says, you know what, we, we can't live like this anymore. Because if you think about Boeing right now, you can try to fool mother nature complexity and say, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to, we're going to be okay. We're going to kind of, you know, not really, uh, listen to what our employees are saying. It will bite you in the end. It's just when. So when you, when you look at it and I know that you're, you're going and talking a little bit here principle wise, 
do you think that it falls into a category of one of the principles? Like, you, you know, right now we went through a presentation this morning um, where Brett Sutton and Josh were speaking in regards of them talking about the four Ds and they were trying to tie it into some different segments mm-hmm. inti- inside of the, the five principles. They even added a sixth principle as they went in, into it. So when you look at this, do you go, okay, this falls into area one, principle one, principle two, that ch- kind of area, or do you not look at it in that method at all? Well, I, you mean in terms of hop? In terms of hop. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, learning is foundational um, for sure. Um, I, where, I, where I challenge a little is I said, you know, I think we, you know, yes, people make mistakes, but I think we have to remember all the fabulousness first um, that, you know, for every mistake they make, they've had many thousands of amazing adjustments in their everyday work. Um, I think it's... Um, I would say, I, you know, I was so steeped in HRO that I haven't really um, set it out according. And actually, uh, James Newman, hey, James, I know you're out there somewhere. Um, he's like, you know, you got to really line this up with the hot principles. And that's something that I'm going to do. I will tell you one thing. It's, the speak up model is definitely not aligned to modern safety science. And um, for me, I've focused on really HRO and resilience engineering. But um, if learning, if we truly believe that learning is foundational, okay, we need to get serious about what's blocking learning. And we can see the response to the learning teams that there is an appetite for it and people respond very well. So my goal is to say, let's, let's make learning team a 24 seven idea in an organization. So the constant, the constant learning from there. Very, very good. So what events do you have coming up next that where people could, that might be open to the public where people can see you? Oh yeah. So of course, community of human and organizational learning in Las Vegas, uh, in June, I'll be there. Um, just honored to collect folks for the high reliability organizing and uh, resilience engineering, Angle, very excited that we have the trauma surgeon uh, from the Las Vegas shooting with us to share about um, what created capacity in the hospital system. Um, that's about it, but I'm look, uh, looking forward to getting, having some more webinars and uh, getting really together our first cohort. One of the things we want to be really clear about is applying to adult learning science. We say like hop science meets adult learning science, which means we need to give people time to absorb. We need to give them skills. They need to practice the skills in a non-threatening environment. It would be great to say, okay, we're going to go in and we're going to do two days and you're all going to be ready to do speaking. And it's not going to work that way. To make it stick, we have to, you have to take it slow. We have to um, apply it uh, step by step in real work. But practicing safe first, but then saying, okay, let's talk about that meaning, right? So you, the number, the first um, action of speaking in is make it clear my intention is to learn. So the first place that has to happen is the leader's head, right? I'm going in that meaning. I'm here to learn. Oh, shoot. How many minutes did I leave for other people to talk? Um, and then... What am I doing in the meeting? Am I telling everyone or am I actually inviting perspectives in a really fear-reducing way? So, um, yeah. So if people want to find out more about you, where can they go? Okay. Well, speakingin.org has a website. Um, Connect with me on LinkedIn, Lauren Mooney with an I, -I L-A-U-R-I-N. So isn't that funny? My parents picked that website. strange way to name me Lauren and it's just working out really well. Now. It, it works out very well. Oh, it's really, it's really helpful. And, um, speaking in has its own page. Um, but the best way is if they want to find out more, just, uh, you know, book a call from the website. I, I am, it's awkward, uh, being the new idea on the block. I'll just be really, really honest, right? Well, 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 it's fun being the new idea on the block because you know that you're going to get a lot of challenges, so this kind of better prepares you as you're going forward with it. And yeah. then I have to ask you one, the last question because I know that, that you wanted to go to, to the Provan, to the Provan um, thing that is about to happen here in about three minutes, so I'm, I'll, I'll run this through you. Okay. What do you think about Energy Safety Canada and what they're putting on here in regards to some of the other conferences that you've been to? Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Not it's... Course, no, I'm no, not kidding whatsoever. I, I've been oh. asking everybody about this. Okay, yeah. No, no. If you're, <laughs> if you're involved with energy, you need to come to the Energy Safety Canada um, conference. It's just so well done, great speakers, food, the just the absolutely everything and then of course we had the magical snow which if this was connecticut i'd be so mad but it was just perfect here and um absolutely lovely lovely people couldn't couldn't be more honored to be here and um 
excited to hope to come back. <laughs> you know, I, I've just been amazed that if you kind of look at some of the stuff that they've done throughout, how they tie in from one year to the next. It's not rep- it's not repeat sessions. It's they are, they're constantly evolving. And now I've been here for two years now. I found out last night there's been 72 of these things. But I look at them and I go, wow, it's just amazing on how this continues to grow. And there was a there was a conversation that I was having with with Jake earlier today, and he was telling me that he asked about. Um, psychological safety and how many people had heard the terminology. He said he had about 300 people in that room and 295 people raised their hands knowing exactly what it was. Didn't know how to apply it, which mm-hmm. that's part of what, what the reason why he was there. But it was amazing to hear just in regards to what Energy Safety Canada is doing in regards to being able to move forward. So that that's the purpose of the question. Oh, yeah. No, I think they're really forward thinking. And I want to uh, personally thank Gordon Walsh because he goes out there and he says, you know, what's new? What's happening? What's innovating? What What's the next way that we can move forward? And you know, that's, that's needed because mm-hmm. we get stuck in a rut. But you know what? The world is changing really fast, and we have to keep up with it. Absolutely. So I'm hoping to just offer one solution <laughs> there. Uh, uh, and I, um, I'm excited about, you know, what keeps me going is thinking that the employee experience is really one of the best ways we can, if we can heal the employee experience, we can do a lot of healing in the world. And um, what I'm excited about is the idea of bringing more truth, freedom, and justice into the workplace. And some of these big corporations have the, they have the power to bring that into communities that have never, ever seen that. So it's not just about speaking up about some <clears throat> piece of equipment that isn't working, which is important, but it's about helping people experience what is good at work. Absolutely. Lauren, I do appreciate the time. Oh, thank you. Take care. Bye. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.